Throughout the 16th and 17th centuries, privateers became incredibly successful, trading around the world. Privateer ships were practically warships that were owned by people who could steal, pillage and take whatever they wanted. They had government permission to attack enemy ships and share any rewards with the government. But one famous privateer and sea captain was Captain William Kidd, or Captain Kidd, and he was a skilled man who sailed many seas, but was accused of piracy and with this was sentenced to death, and was brutally gibbeted after his execution on the banks of the River Thames. But what is the story of his execution? Join us today to look at the brutal execution of Captain Kidd, and remember to support our channel. Please make sure to subscribe. Born in Dundee in Scotland around 1655, William Kidd is a young man settled in New York City, after the English took over from the Dutch. Whilst here he became friends with many important colonial figures, including governors, and around this time he apparently served as an apprentice on a pirate ship, before he then became a privateer. He was a member of a French-English pirate crew that sailed around the Caribbean, and during one of the voyages he rose up with other crew members, and they managed to oust the captain. Following this they renamed the ship Blessed William, and Kidd became the captain through appointment of the governor of the British colony they sailed to, or by an election on board. At this time he was an experienced captain and sailor, and Kidd and his men attacked a French island and destroyed the only town there, and looted the area, gaining £2,000 in wealth from this. During the War of the Grand Alliance, he captured an enemy privateer off the New England coast, and he then worked on commission from governments and he would get money from privateering, splitting the loot with locals. His ship was later stolen by Captain Robert Culford, who was a pirate himself, but Kidd was so rich he helped to create the Trinity Church in New York. He married, but then on the 11th of December 1695, he was asked by the Governor of New York, Richard Coote, to attack others who were involving themselves with pirates, and also French enemy ships. The request was backed up by the English King, and much of his venture was paid for by noble lords and important powerful men in England. He was given a letter signed by King William III, who authorised him as a privateer, and this letter said that 10% of the loot was for the crown, and it's believed the king paid for part of Kidd's voyage himself. He had a new ship, named Adventure Galley, and this was a ship which was good for catching pirates. On board were 34 cannons and 150 men, but also oars which allowed the ship to manoeuvre well in battle, even when the winds dropped, and he chose his best officers for his voyage, selecting the crew himself. It was said that, as the Adventure Galley sailed down the Thames, Kidd unaccountably failed to salute a navy yacht at Greenwich, as custom dictated. The navy yacht then fired a shot to make him show respect, and Kidd's crew responded with an astounding display of impudence, by turning and slapping their backsides in disdain. Kidd refused to salute, and much of his crew was then pressed into naval service. However, short of men, Kidd sailed for New York, and captured a French ship en route. He then gathered a replacement crew, many of whom were former pirates. In September 1696, Kidd set course for the Cape of Good Hope in southern Africa, and a third of his crew died from cholera, and the new ship had many leaks, and things were not going well. His ventures were costing too much, and he could not cover the costs himself, and he also failed to attack a number of ships when he had the chance. Kidd even killed one of his own men on the 30th of October 1697. A gunner was on deck sharpening a chisel when a Dutch ship appeared, and he urged Kidd to attack, which was considered an act of piracy, as the Netherlands were not at war with the English. But Kidd then hit him in the face with an iron bucket, and fractured his skull, and the gunner died the next day. But there were many accusations of piracy levelled against Captain Kidd, Escaped prisoners claimed they had been hoisted up and beaten by Kidd and his men. There were also accusations that Kidd's men tortured others, and he was declared a pirate by a Royal Navy officer. Kidd had promised him 30 men, but sailed away at night to maintain his numbers, and this was seen as an act of piracy and defiance. He raised French colours on the 30th of January 1698, and took his biggest prize, the 400 ton Quidda Merchant, which was an Indian ship hired by Armenian merchants. On board was a huge amount of satin, gold and silver and other valuable items. News of this capture reached England, but Kidd was then declared a pirate. He later sailed on to Madagascar, 
and it's alleged he met Robert Culford, the pirate who stole his ship years before. There are different accounts as to what happened. Some claim that he showed him respect, but another account says he ordered his crew to attack Culford's ship. But with this, it's believed many of Kidd's men abandoned him for another pirate, with only 13 remaining on a venture galley. Kidd turned back for home, and his ship was suffering badly. He then ordered the ship to be burned after he salvaged whatever he could, but before returning to New York City, he knew he was a wanted pirate, and that several English warships were looking for him. He would stop off and hide some of his treasure, but was lured into captivity. The New York governor invited Kidd to Boston, with false promises of clemency, but he was arrested on the 6th of July 1699. He was then placed in prison and in solitary confinement, and his wife was also arrested. His imprisonment was very harsh, and he was driven insane. But after a year he was sent to England for questioning by Parliament, and was placed on trial by the Tory party in London. He was charged with piracy on the high seas, and of the murder of his gunner William Moore. He was then held inside of Newgate Prison, and he wrote many letters to the English king to be spared and saved, but nothing good would come his way. He was even given two lawyers to help, but was then shocked that he was charged with murder. He was found guilty of all the charges, and was then sentenced to death. His execution occurred on the 23rd of May 1701 at Execution Dock in Wapping in London. On the north bank of the River Thames, Execution Dock still stands, and here many pirates who had been condemned to death were hanged and were gibbeted to send a clear warning to other people not to engage in acts of piracy. But Captain Kidd's execution did not go well. He was brought in front of a large crowd, and the noose was secured around his neck. However, when whatever he was standing on was kicked out from underneath him, the rope snapped and Kidd survived. Some claim that he was spared by God and should have been allowed to live, technically surviving his execution, but this was not good enough for the executioner. A few minutes later, the executioner sourced a new rope, and from the gallows he was hanged for a number of minutes before he succumbed to his death. But his ordeal wasn't over. His body was then displayed and gibbeted over the River Thames at Tilbury Point to send a message to the people not to get involved in acts of piracy, and it was left there rotting for three years. A number of his associates were later convicted of piracy, but many were pardoned just before they were about to be hanged. Today a legend has emerged around Captain Kidd that he buried treasure to one day later return for it. People have searched for this for many years, but he was a Scottish sea captain who was considered a very skilled military leader. He was a successful privateer, and he would have got incredibly rich, and at times he was even in the pockets of the government and the king, and he hoped he would make them a significant amount of wealth and riches for the treasury. But on the banks of the River Thames, he was executed, and his remains were then displayed for a number of years. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.